Hey boys, welcome to my Queensland Origin Team Game 1 discussion. Now, I was meant to do this, well, I was going to do this video a while ago, pretty much straight after the New South Wales one, but um, I sort of just didn't get a chance to doing it, but um, it sort of worked out alright because obviously uh, I'm making this on a Tuesday, so I'll go up uh, probably Wednesday morning just before Origin. Uh, so that's good, and also... There's been some big news coming out of the Queensland team uh, very recently, so we can go through the, the proper team now, which, um, <laughs> let's have a look at, this is what they've, they've named anyway. So, Morgan has shifted to fullback with Slater obviously out, Valentine Holmes, Dane Gagai on the wings, Dane Gagai apparently dislocated a finger <laughs> as well, but you would expect, you know, you... I don't think he'd be out. He's obviously going to play. Uh, Inglis, Chambers in the centres. Munster, Ben Hunt in the halves. Dylan Napper, Jared Wallace, front rowers. Andrew McCulloch, dummy half. And then the back row of Cooper, Felice Kafusi, Josh, McGu uh, Josh McGuire. And then the interchange, Josh Papali, Cohen has Jai Arrow. And the new man, Anthony Milford, moves on to the bench. Now, I personally, I think this is... It's a strong team. It's a strong team. I mean, uh, it's the t there's only yeah, there's probably only a couple of change. Well, yeah, probably one main change I would actually make. I feel like this is basically the strongest team they could put up under the circumstances. Obviously, the big revelation of Smith retiring. I think Andrew McCulloch just he had to be there. I think McCulloch, you know, he's always been primed to be the Queensland, the future Queensland dummy half, and also. I guess the Australian dummy half to an extent. It, it will be a tight battle, him and Damien Cook, honestly, for like higher honours. But um, yeah, McCulloch was always primed to do it. And I, he, he's, I personally think he's still the second best dummy half in the game behind Smith. Um, because he's very, obviously, he's very similar to Smith. You know, he's not a huge runner of the ball. I think he is a bit more, he does run the ball a little bit more than Smith. I think he's a little quicker off the mark. I think... His ta like defensively, I, I probably think he's a little bit stronger than Smith. Not in the terms of Smith doesn't miss tackles or anything, or not many anyway. But McCulloch is just a bit stronger in defense. Like he he's able to get up out of the line and 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 shut stuff down. He's just a little bit stronger. Smith is not obviously Smith is a very good defender. Uh, I think obviously where Smith is going to be missed is well one is experience, but then also kicking his kicking game. Like, the left foot out dummy half is very, very valuable. Um, and then also just his, his game management um, is second to none. So, it's a big loss, but I, I think McCulloch, he, he fits the mold. Like, he fits the mold. He's not he's not a guy that does fancy stuff. Um, he just does his job, and he does it well. And it, I guess I, I said the kicking game of Smith. McCulloch's, McCulloch's got a good right foot. Obviously, a left foot is, like, very handy, but... McCulloch's kicked like a fair few 40 20s in his career. Like, he's good at our dummy half uh, with his kicking game. And yeah, defensively, passing, he just, he's good. I, I think he was the obvious replacement. I think Jake Friend has sort of, he's sort of gone downhill since he was talked about. And Jake Granville, I, I really don't like Jake Granville, honestly. I think he's pretty ordinary. Um, so McCulloch was the number one pick. Uh, we'll go on the back line. Uh, well, I guess the only contentious one here is, well, I think it was out of Holmes or Corey Oates for the wing spot. Darry, I'm very happy they haven't picked Darius Boyd. I know, like, I, I don't dislike Darius Boyd, but he's been, he hasn't been good this year at all. Like, he's, I think, obviously, he's still carrying, like, a niggling injury, and he's just, he hasn't been playing well. So, I'm glad they haven't picked him on the wing, and also they haven't picked him at fullback now that Slater's out, which... You know, it would have been a bit silly if they did. Um, I think Corey Oates is very unlucky to miss out. Uh, but I can't I can't be disappointed because Holmes is a really good player as well. Um, but it was a toss-up. It was a toss-up for me. I was like, Corey Oates, Holmes, either one I'm going to be happy with. I think Holmes, uh, he has a little bit more, yeah, he has a little, a little bit more skill and... He can do a few more freakish things, although scoring tries in the corner, Corey Holmes is second to none. Um, but, you know, Holmes, he can get in the middle of the field and 
you know, get around the ruck and stuff like that. But they're going to miss Corey Oates. He's like, he just his run, like his hard runs out of their own 20 meter line for Brisbane are just incredible. Like he just, he just makes ground. He takes big contact and just keeps going like that. He's going to be, it would have been nice to have him there, but obviously Gagai was going to be there. And then the centers of uh, Inglis and Chambers, very strong. I think Inglis is starting to really find his form. And obviously, being captain this year, I think Inglis is going to have a massive, massive game. Um, I'm not sure who they're marking. I'm assuming Inglis is marking Roberts, or is it Mitchell? I, I actually, I'm not too sure, but it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I would actually like to see Inglis up against Mitchell. Obviously, Mitchell is the the young Inglis, but I think Inglis, he, he's going to have a point to prove, and I. I I honestly think Inglis could really stand him up because Mitchell is strong one on one, but I think Inglis is just stronger. <laughs> um, and yeah, Mitchell is like a. I think his biggest problem is he's a bit lazy. So uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. And then Chambers, you know, he's just he's just a strong performer. Like he you don't he doesn't really make mistakes. Good defensively, pretty good with the ball as well. So very good there. Um, the halves, Cameron Munster, Ben Hunt. I actually, so this is actually probably the other contentious one. I'm, I personally think probably Cherry Evans should have been halfback. Now, I, again, that's that's a 50-50 one. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't agree. There's probably a lot of people that do agree. It's it's sort of, it's tough. But I actually, I think Cherry Evans just a, is a better halfback than Ben Hunt. Like, Ben Hunt's been good this year, but he has played off the back of, like, a very, very dominant forward pack. And he's also playing outside Gareth Widop. Um, so he sort of had a lot of advantages to look good this year. I don't think Ben Hunt has been, personally, I don't think he's been incredible. He's been good, don't get me wrong, and I think he'll still do a good job. But I don't think he personally has been like a standout halfback. Whereas Cherry Evans, um, his forward pack has not been that good. Occasionally they, they get up for it and play well. The Seagulls have been very on-off, and then also his 5'8", obviously Lachlan Croker was there to start with, and he was okay, obviously he did his knee, and now it's, um, well, it was sort of a bit of chop and change, but now Trent Hodkinson is there, um, but I think Cherry Evans has probably been a, personally a better performer than Hunt this year, but again, it's it's a 50-50 one, I, I think I probably would have gone with Cherry Evans, um, because the other the other point about this is that Cameron Munster, I mean, he had to be at five eight, but Cameron Munster is not really, he's not a, he doesn't set up the game right. He's you want him to get the ball, you want him to run, and also you know he's he's got he's got a good passing game, but mostly you just want him to get the ball, run, get an offload, that sort of stuff. He's strong defensively, and he he just plays off the cuff. Um, ben Hunt is is very similar. <laughs> Because it's sort of, at the Dragons, he does play halfback, but Gareth Widop is probably more the organizer at the Dragons, so Ben Hunt is halfback, and again, I don't think he's a real organizer of of teams. He's more off the cuff like Munster, he's good when he runs the ball, um, he's quick, uh, so I think having like a Cherry Evans there, who is like a traditional organizer, like he he's a guy that gets gets the team into position, uh, but then he's also got good ball playing, and then he's he's pretty strong running the ball as well, Cherry Evans. So that's my main reason for that. I'm not too disappointed. I still think Hunt and Munster, they could be pretty good. Like, both, you know, having two players that like taking the line on, it's not a bad thing. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Moving into the forwards, pretty much the starting team is all good, apart from one major thing, and this is probably my biggest uh, selection that I think is is not not necessarily wrong, but probably one I would have gone differently is Gavin Cooper. I think Cooper has been terrible this year. I've never really been a massive fan of Cooper. I always thought he was he was always decent. Um, but I think you know Thurston sort of carried him for a lot last couple of seasons, and he's just always been an average back rower. Um, and this year he just he's been. He's just been bad, honestly. I, I Cooper has just been ordinary this year, um, as with a lot of Cowboys, but Cooper especially 
has, has not been good. And I personally would have gone with Papali to start in the back row. And this is another one of my pet peeves because uh, Papali is coming off the bench and you would expect him to once again for Origin, he's going to play in the middle of the field, which I don't think suits Papali. I, Papali is much stronger on an edge back row because he's got good footwork, he's got good ball skills, and he's got a good offload. And they're the type of guys you want out wide. Him just used as a batting ram in the middle of the field is just so... It just takes away so much of Papali's, like, attacking weaponry. It just... I, I think it makes no sense. Like, I would put Papali into the back row spot, um, and then I would put probably off and Gowie onto the bench as the uh, the the prop, um, because often Yowie has been really good this year. He's always had the potential, and he's sort of really stood up this year with a young Broncos forward pack and a lot of injuries. He's been he's been great. And the other guy, uh, well, I'll just quickly talk about the rest of these guys. Cohen Hess had to be there. Jai Arrow had to be there. Jai Arrow, honestly, is such a he's such a good player. Um, I'm very excited to see him there. He's just like he reminds me a lot of Corey Parker. Um, obviously no goal kicking, but he just, like, he's not a real big guy, but he just, he just takes the contact and he just, he can always seem to get that offload. He's always got the leg drive, break a few tackles, and then he's just very strong defensively. So I'm very happy Ari's there. Uh, and then Milford coming in, I'm actually pretty excited for Milford as the X factor off the bench. I think, you know, him coming on, when a few tied forwards, it's going to be interesting. Well, before I go into that, the other guy who I think could have got the bench spot if you had Papali in the back row, Cooper out of the team, is Daniel Alvaro, who <laughs> it's weird, like no one's really talked about Alvaro, but he's he has been really impressive for Eels this year. I never, I used to really dislike Alvaro. I don't, he just always annoyed me for the last couple of seasons. I don't know what it was about him, but he just sort of annoyed me, um, but this year especially, I still find him a little bit annoying, I, I don't know why, just something about him, but he, he just seems a bit niggly sometimes, but he he's trimmed down like a lot, like he, he looked completely different this year, and he's playing big minutes with good impact, um, and he's looked the Eels best forward by a mile, in my opinion, um, has Alvaro, and he hasn't really been talked about it at all, but yeah, I think he's been a bit unlucky not to really get a look in. So, yeah, I, I think either Othengali or Alvaro in for Cooper and then Papali in the back row spot. That, that would have been my biggest change to this team. Now, let's get to the the big thing here, which is now Morgan at fullback and um, Milford on the bench. I, I heard that apparently they could do a late switch and put Munster to fullback and bring Morgan up to 5'8", which I, you know, personally, I, I don't dislike that idea. I think, you know, Munster can play anywhere, but I actually do think he's a, I do think Munster is a better fullback than a, like a 5'8", because at fullback, you know, you do want your fullbacks to ball play, and I guess this is sort of ties in with the Tedesco thing, um, but I think Munster is just a better ball player in general, but at fullback, you, you predominantly want your fullbacks to take the line on, and Munster is very good at that. And Morgan, I mean, he's he's played a lot in the halves recently, and he's he has developed into a fairly decent organizer, um, especially last year. Obviously, obviously, this year he's been a pretty lacking, but I actually don't mind. I wouldn't mind it if they did that little switch. So we'll see what happens there. Um and then Anthony Milford coming on, like I said, it's it's a little tricky because where where do you play him? As a utility, you'd probably say Morgan is a better utility on the bench because he can play more positions anywhere in the back line and he's stronger defensively, so you could throw him on as like a lock. Milford, on the other hand, I think he's more of an X-Factor bench player, so he could come on and, and change the game um, you know, get a line break, get a try, whatever it is, but he's also, if you bring him on, like, it's tricky, like, are they gonna, are they gonna take off, like, one of their back row forwards and just run an extra sort of, 
you know small guy around the ruck like it would it would obviously be dangerous and attack but defensively it might be a little bit concerning uh and i guess this is the it's a tricky thing it's like when do you do it like you've got to you got to be careful when you do it but i do like i do like milford getting picked because i think Milf, like milford copped a lot of criticism at the start of the year i still think he was decent but he's really come good the last few weeks like i think his running game has looked very very sharp he's looked very dangerous and uh, yeah i i think he could cause some troubles coming off the bench but yeah it's 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 a it's a tough it's a tough um it's a tough thought to really when to bring him on but we'll, we'll see what happens there i guess the only other contentious thing here is probably a lot of people thought Kalen ponga would go straight to fullback now you know i i wouldn't have been disappointed i, I think i would have liked to see ponga play fullback but i you know i'm not I don't think Ponga would get overawed. I don't think he would have a shocker, but I think it's probably, uh, I think it is fair enough to give him another, another year. I don't know if Queensland get pumped in the first game, wouldn't be surprised if they do throw Ponga into the team. If I guess if Slater can't play the second game, which he probably will, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's changes, but you know, throwing Ponga into the, into this side, like he's really young still, um, they would definitely target him, try to really rattle him. Um, it's probably, I don't know if it's for the best because, I mean, it, you know, he's a young superstar. Like, he could he could, he could, tear open the whole game, honestly. Like, he's so good. But, I, yeah, it, it's a tough one. I'm not, I'm disappointed he's not there, but I'm also not like he should have 100% been there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's tough. I know a lot of people are going to be like, Ponga should have just been at fullback. And I I, I think he would have played well, but I, I'm i looking at the team and it, it looks it looks strong. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's my thoughts about the team. Only one real um, change I would have made is Co- uh, Cooper being out, Papali in back row, and then Alvaro or Offengiawi into the bench. But other than that, or probably, yeah, I guess also Cherry Evans, I would have had his halfback instead of Hunt. But it's going to be a good game. Like, well, it's going to be a good game if Queensland win. <laughs> but overall, like, it's it's a tough one, dude. I, I don't know how it's going to go. This is a game where a team could potentially put on a big score. It could be an absolute, um, you know, thriller. Who knows? Like, this is, a, this is a game where who knows what will happen. I mean, New South Wales have a lot of, a lot of talent, but they also have their deficiencies in defense especially um you know and then yeah it's it's tough it's tough uh, obviously i'm i'm betting on queensland but it's not a game where i'm i'm super confident well it's yeah it's gonna be tough uh i uh, what, what was i gonna say it's gonna be uh it's gonna be touch and go i guess well we'll leave it at that but yeah what, what do you guys reckon like I, i'm interested to see or hear you guys' opinion who you would have had in the Queensland side. Would you have thrown Ponga straight to fullback with Slater out? Who would your halves pairings be? Um, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm interested to see what people think. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll find out after Wednesday night who uh, who needs to make changes. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, this video. Look forward to more in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.